Good day, students. Today, we are going to continue talking about exponents, but we are going to talk about some certain properties that happen with exponents. Um, before we get started, I want you guys to know that throughout the video, I am going to be using two different colors. So um, to title each section of the page, I used um, the color black, and then I'm going to be using a dark purple to go over um, some examples. And then uh, to tell you guys like the, the rule or the property, I'm going to use a different color purple. Um, it's up to you if you want to color coordinate your notes as well. If you do not care about that, then you don't have to do that. If that is something that you think you would like to do, um, you will need maybe two other colors aside from just your regular like pencil that you're writing with. It could be a colored pencil. It could be like a pen, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this page looks like in two sections. So um, because there, it fill, we fill up the whole page. I'm only showing you about half the page in the photo. So if this is, or in the, in the video, not the photo. Um, so go ahead, if this is your second time watching the video to take a pause and copy what you see on the screen. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and move the video down so you can kind of see what the bottom half of the page looks like. So this is the bottom half of the page. So you can go ahead and pause and copy this down. All right, so here are some different situations that can happen when we're talking about exponents. So we have already discussed how we expand and find the standard form of an exponent. We looked at some different scenarios when we have negative exponents and so forth. Um, so sometimes what happens is we're given multiple exponents in a problem, and there is a quicker way to do the math than to actually like go about what we did, talked about in the last video about how we solve for exponents. So you'll kind of see what I mean as I go through some examples. So let's say we have an instance where we're looking at two exponents that have the same base. So for example, let's say we have three to the power of four, um, and let's say we have three to the power of two. Now, this specific property that I'm about to show you says, if we have two exponents with the same base and we are multiplying them, there's something unique that happens. So before I kind of write out what the rule is, let me show y'all, okay, if we were to break down these exponents into expanded form, let's see what that would look like. So three to the power of four is three times three times three times three, right? And three to the power of two is three times three. So if we combined all of these, three times three times three times three times three times three, this is equivalent to three to the power of six. We're multiplying three times itself six times. So the rule is when we are multiplying exponents and they have the same base. So for example, three to the power of let's say A times three to the power of another number, let's say B. The rule tells us that what we can do to rewrite the exponent is just keep the same base, but our new power is going to be whatever A plus B is equivalent to. So we found out that three to the power of four and three to the power of two is the same as three to the power of six by using the expanded form. But another way we could have thought about that is it's gonna be the same thing as three to the power of four plus two, which is also three to the power of six. So if we're multiplying and they have the same base, this is a quick way to figure out the new exponent is just to add the exponents together if we are multiplying. But let's say, for instance, we have the same base and we're doing division. So let's say we have the problem uh, three to the power of three divided by, let's just say three to the power of one. So if we use the expanded form, here's what this looks like. Three times three times three, right? Three to the power of three over three to the power of one is just three itself. So if I actually were to go about doing the division, um, remember anything divided by itself is just one whole. So I could take these two threes and cancel out because we're gonna end up dividing by three. So that cancels out one of these threes that's up top. So we're left with three times three, which is the same thing as three to the power of two. If we're just keeping it all in exponent form and we're not actually keeping it in the standard form or solving it for the standard form, the rule is if we have any number with the same base, so let's say three to the power of A, and we're dividing by another exponent that has the same base, three to the power of B, the rule says that we can keep the same base and then we're going to subtract the powers. So three to the power of three minus 
one is going to be the same thing. So three to the power of three minus one is how another version of how we can get three to the power of two. So when we multiply, we can add the powers together to rewrite the new exponent. When we're dividing, we could subtract the powers together to rewrite the new exponent. And again, this is if we're just trying to keep everything in exponent form. If we were to keep everything in standard form, um, this is also a way we could use these properties to get the new exponent and then just solve that exponent for the standard form to get our solution if that's what we're being asked to do. Okay. Let's look at the situation. I know I mentioned in the last video how I was going to talk about what happens when we have negative exponents or negative powers, I guess I should say. I'll put slash powers here. So that way you know that um, I'm talking about the small numbers in the exponents. So let's say we have the problem three to the power of negative one, and we'll do three to the power of negative three. Um, so I use the same base in both instances, but the base in this case doesn't necessarily, I'm not comparing these two. These are two separate problems. So um, the way that we would write anything with a negative exponent is we are going to write it as one over three or whatever the base is to the positive power of that number. So three to the power of positive one. So we would write three to the power of negative three as one over three to the power of positive three. So in a sense, these negative exponents are kind of like the reciprocals of the exponents. Um, and then if we were just to kind of simplify, this is one over three, three to the power of three is 27. So this is one over 27. Okay. So the rule is when we have any number to a negative power, so I'm just going to do negative X to represent the negative power. It is equivalent to one over the base times the, not times, that base to the positive power. Again, because this is kind of a form of reciprocals when we're looking at exponents. Um, and if you are concerned or if you're curious why, like why do we do one over this number? In the previous video, I kind of show you a pattern that happens with exponents. And now you can go back and look at that pattern and see, oh, every time we're dividing by our base. So in order to keep the pattern going, we have to have these versions kind of of the one over the number. Okay. So this is the rule and what happens when we have a negative power in an exponent. The last situation is um, what if we have an exponent raised to another exponent? So for example, let's say we have three to the power of three, but let's say we wanna take that to the power of two. So a lot of times what you, how you'll see this written is there'll be parentheses around the exponent and then the new exponent is on the outside of this. So what this is really saying is we wanna take three to the power of three times itself twice right? Because to the power of two means we're going to take this base times itself twice. So what this looks like if we expand it is three times three times three times another group of three times three times three, which you'll see this is all equivalent to three times itself six times, three to the power of six. So the rule is if we have a number that is being raised to a certain power. And then that particular exponent is being raised to another power. So I just put B, okay? This is equivalent to the same thing as keeping the base, but then multiplying the powers together. So A times B. So if we go back to this example, three to the power of three, then raised to the power of two, we said was three to the power of six. So three times two is Six. So that's another way that we can rewrite exponents being raised to exponents by using this quick kind of property or rule when we're looking at exponents. So the reason why these properties are in place is to make our work with properties much easier. Um, when you guys start doing uh, algebra in the future, um, there's going to be a lot of situations where these properties will help you simplify the expressions or the equations that you're working on. Um, so what I would like for you to do, if this is the second time watching the video, um, I'm going to show you the pra practice problems. If this is the first time watching the video, you may want to go back. I feel like I talked a little quickly in this video. You may want to go back and kind of just review. I always did an example before I showed you the rules so you can kind of see how it works. But maybe now that you have the rules, go back and look 
at the rules and then look and see how I do the problem to see if, if it makes the connection easier, okay? So um, here are the practice problems for this particular uh, video. So there are four practice problems here. So go ahead and take a pause and copy them in your notebook. And these practice problems are three to the power of four times three to the power of six, four to the power of 12 divided by four to the power of four, six to the power of negative four, and four to the power of two raised to the power of four. So go ahead and solve them. You can keep your answer in the exponent form if you wanna write the standard form of each solution as well, just so you can practice that, you're more than welcome to do it. I am mainly gonna be looking for the exponent form of answers. I hope everybody has an outstanding day and I will see you guys soon.